Okay, so now we need that the same people get the same link. That would be a big issue. Yeah, I think there's a group chat or something. Yeah, I guess. I don't have no I, I think I have a couple of Mumbai of, of Matic because I, I just noticed that poly is not working. That's like an issue Ooh. right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I don't know why. So you want to switch to Matic? Yeah, I have I think I have oh I found Sepolia now. It must work now. Okay, no, nice. now, now it's in chain list, but it was not when I was there, it was it was not there. <laughs> Okay, so then it's mine. Oh, yeah, now it's working. Continue. I think we should just continue now. Yeah. It's recorded, so I guess everyone can just like make reference to yeah. it later. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um okay, this is okay, perfect. Okay, so I was just checking, guys, and now we have Sepolia in chain list again. So you can just come to, and then we will have a lot of uh, RPC endpoints that, that we can use. So in this case, just to show you again, uh, right now, if we initialize the three instance with this Polygon Mumbai RPC, we will have this block number because we are talking to the Mumbai testnet. But now if I change it for this, 
Now the block number is different because now we are talking either here to talk to different blockchains. Um, this was only like for testing. So now to deploy a smart contract, I have that in the in the slides here. So we will need two things. One is the API, one is the bytecode. To get this API and the bytecode with the compiler, we are going to see ABI and bytecode. So basically Remix ID is compiling your smart contract and then you can just copy paste the ABI and the bytecode from there. So let's just copy the ABI. So I will just create this ABI.json and then I will just paste the ABI. This is kind of like a interface that we will need for JavaScript to be able to interact with the contract. And then the bytecode, let's just have bytecode.json. Then we copy the bytecode from here. And then we just put it here. We need to put this with the quotation marks. And it must start with 0x because all the values in, in the blockchain are uh, hexadecimal. Now we have the ABI, we have the bytecode. So now we are able to, to deploy the contract. So we need to import ABI bytecode and Web3 module. So we just have const ABI require ABI.json and const bytecode require bytecode.json. Perfect. Let's just check that we are importing that correctly. Uh, bytecode. Yeah, so we imported. Perfect. Okay, so now what we need to do to deploy a smart contract, I have that in the in the slides here. We need to initialize a contract. And we need to initialize the wallet. So to initialize a wallet, we just put the steps and then we can go one by one. Initialize wallet, initialize contract, create contract deployer, and then send the transaction. Okay, so to initialize a wallet using Web3.js, we need to use the function um, add from the wallet package. So we just need to write Web3.it. Everything is basically Web3.it. We need to write that everywhere. So web three dot it dot um accounts dot add, and then we are able to add a private key here. Mm. Let me just accounts. Uh, oh yeah, wallet. Oh, I mean the wallet, and then add. So web three dot it dot accounts dot wallet dot add, and then if we put a private key here, we'll be able to 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 interact or to use to send transactions from this wallet. So to get the private key, we can come to MetaMask. I'm going to use, let's say, have fun here. Yeah, this is Zurich wallet. We click in account details, show private key. Then we put our password and then we have the private key here. I right? remember to never share this with anyone and this is only for testing purposes um and then you can paste your private key here starting with zero x and now if we send a transaction we'll be sending a transaction from this it zurich um wallet so let's just store this wallet in this um variable which i call wallet perfect and then if we initialize the wallet just for you to to understand what we are doing here we have a wallet, which is an array of accounts. And then the account is an object that will have an address. We have a private key. And then we have some methods, which are sign transactions, sign data, and encrypt. So this is, yeah, this is basically a wallet. Then to initialize the contract, what we need to do is to type new web3.it.contract. And then here we need to send the ABI and that's everything. This is how we initialize a contract. If we are going to talk to a contract, we can just send here the address of the smart contract. But in this case, we are going to deploy the contract. So we just need the ABI to create a contract deployer. So we just need to put here deployer. Um, my contract, we need, we need to use the contract instance, which, which is this my contract dot deploy and then we need to send an object here with two main things one is the data and one is the arguments so the data is the bytecode 
that we have, that we have from here. That's why the bytecode, we only need the bytecode for the for deploying the smart contract. And the arguments are the arguments that their constructor of our smart contract is receiving. So in this case, the argument is an address, which will be the owner of the contract. So let's say that the owner of this contract will be the address, let's say it Oxford. I have an address for each event where I go. So it Oxford will be the address owner of the contract. So I want to set that here. So we will see that right now the balance of it Oxford is 0 0.001. But the address that is deploying the smart contract is it Zurich. So this is the deployer. And then what we can do to send the transaction is we use the deployer.send. And then we need to specify the wallet that is sending the transaction. In this case, will be wallet zero dot address. For you to see what is this wallet zero dot address, I'm going to print this here. Wallet, let's, let's call it deployer wallet, the transaction from this wallet, and then this wallet dot zero dot address. Uh, and then this will return a transaction receipt. And then we can print that here as well transaction receipt dot options dot address and then we will see that the transaction the, the contract was deployed to this address so contract deploy it to and then we will get an address here perfect is there any questions so far with this i'm going to kind of recap this really quick uh we are initializing a, wa a wallet with a private key here remember that this wallet must have funds to be able to deploy the contract we are initializing the contract here um, just we just need the ABI. Then we are creating the contract deployer. We need the data is the bytecode, which is what we are deploying or we are writing in the blockchain, which is this bytecode. And the arguments is basically the constructor is receiving an address owner. So that's what that's why we are sending this address and setting this address as the owner. Then we just need to send the transaction by typing deployer.send and specifying that this wallet is sending the transaction. So if we run this, uh, let's see, number of arguments, not much of return. Oh yeah, we need to put this in in the right the braces here. Okay, perfect. Uh, so this is the deployer wallet, and then contract deployed to this address. So this address is really important. I'm going to put that in the chat because actually that's important to have. And then if we go to scan, and then we look for that contract address that I just put in the chat, we will see that that was deployed, the contract creation, creation 17 seconds ago. Then we can just see here <clears throat> contract. We can verify and publish the contract. So the compiler type is just a single file. This is just one, one file. Um, compiler version 0.8.0. And then the license is MIT. Perfect. So we just need to, to select these things, continue. We need to copy paste here the Solidity code. So I will just select everything. I will paste it here. I'm not a robot. Hopefully it will work. Perfect. And now if we go to iterate scan, we will see this check here. That means that this is the code that is deployed in this smart contract. This doesn't mean that the contract is not a scam or something like that. This just means that this is the code that is deployed in the blockchain. So now we have a smart contract here. Um, then we have the read contract methods here, which is the get balance, have zero. And then we have the write contract. Uh, if we can actually let's let's try to donate from here, will that will be easier and faster? And then I'm going to donate from uh, Itzurik zero point. Oh, but this will be with Ether. Uh, Ether we just sent. Oh, actually, I will send it from this one. I will connect my wallet here. But I will use this. Remember that you need to have funds. So I will connect this Vault wallet here. Connect 
So I'm interacting with the smart contract using ether scan. Let's see, that's 90. Yeah, so this E90 here is the same wallet here. I'm going to donate like five ether. Then you can see the MetaMask pop up here. Confirm. So this is like interacting with the smart contract right now. And let's just wait like a few seconds and we will see here the transaction. It's taking a while. Okay, let's just try to do this. Okay, meanwhile, I'm what I'm going to do is to create a React app because that's the most important part of the day by running MPX create React app. And let's say coffee app. Let's call it like that. Coffee app. Okay, then this will create our new React app. Okay, and now we have here that we call the method donate in the smart contract 41 seconds ago from this wallet. And then if we come to the contract and we go to read contract, we will see that the balance is now five ether. You can also see that here because now we donate five ether to the smart contract. Uh, Cienco, does this work only with it? Or you can use other crypto like Tron. You can use any token, like for example, USDT, like any token that is in the Sepolia network. Or if you are using Ethereum, so any token that is in the Ethereum network. But in this case, this smart contract is only using like the it, right? I think Tron, I don't know how you can develop smart contracts in Tron, but I don't think Tron is EVM compatible. So I don't know how that would work with Tron. Uh, but I'm sure that there is a Tron token in the in the um, Ethereum network. Okay, so this React app is taking a while. Um, what I'm going to do is to create a script to get the balance of the smart contract. So using Web3.js. So basically what we need to have is importing the Web3 module once again. Then we also need to import the ABI. Uh, and then we just need to initialize the contract and call the contract. So I will just create a function here, which is this, this here. Okay. So to do this, what we need to do is to initialize the contract. So let's call it my contract, new web3.eat. Oh, I forgot the provider. This will be the provider. Remember that this is in, in Sepolia. So we just need web3.it.contract. And then we need the ABI. And we also need the contract address because now we are talking to this specific contract. And then what we can do is to call the contract by type. So this is the function that we are calling in the smart contract dot call. And then this will return the value. And we are going to put this here in this uh, address, in this uh, variable value. And this is balance. Okay, now let's run this. Now it's get balance. And then you can see that the balance is um, five ether. Okay, this React app is creating. It's taking a while. Mm. But I want to show you the front end part. Okay, so we have CD copy app. Okay, so now let's come here. Okay, so basically we have a React app. Uh, we just run things npm start. If we run the npm start, we are going to see the basic React app. I'm going to remove all these things that we don't need to use. So the only thing that we are going to touch is the app.js. So I'm going to remove all these things to make it like more readable. Perfect, we just have this, let's remove this. Okay, so we just have this background, this gray background. And what we are going to do now that we are here 
is to install the Web3 JS library by typing npm install Web3. Then Web3. Okay, that will while we are going to create three main functions, which one is to connect MetaMask. Connect MetaMask. And then let's say want to withdraw. Okay. So let's create this real quick. And then the same here. Be connect. One will be connect. Then we have get balance. And then with one, the one, the last one will be withdraw. So let's see what we have here. Oh, since is this right? Uh, I don't, oh yeah, I have it here. Put it in the run. Yeah. Okay, so we have three buttons. One is connect, get balance, and withdraw. Uh, so when we click in connect, this connect, this connect button will call this connect function. So to do this, we can do this. We can just do this. So that means that every time that we click in connect, let's just try calling connect function. And then let's try this. If every time that we click in connect, let's just see here. Uh, if I click in connect, oh, I have an error. We click. Oh yeah, so I make a mistake here. It is without the parentheses. So if I click in connect, you are calling the connect function in the console. Perfect. So that means that it's working. And then we are going to do the same here for the other ones. Uh, and here. But then get balance. And then we draw. Perfect. So now this is a really uh, aha moment that you will learn right now. What we need to do to connect to MetaMask is just basically two lines of, of code. The first line of code will be to initialize the provider of Web3. Uh, let me just create this here. Once at Web3 contract. All right, voila. So what I'm going to do is to create the Web3 instance. We see provider, we just need to type window.ethereum. So that's the first thing. The provider, um, this is called injected provider. So we initialize the provider with a window.ethereum provider, and then we need to request accounts. And to request accounts, we can also put the accounts here. And then accounts equal to web three dot it dot request accounts. And then this is a wait. Perfect. And then let's see what happened. And then I will print the accounts in the console as well. Perfect. So remember, initialize the provider using window dot Ethereum. Then we just type web three dot it dot request accounts. And this is the function that will will pop up MetaMask, and then we will see which accounts are connected. So let me open the terminal. Then if we click in connect, we will see that, oh, okay. Because I, I was already connected, but let me just disconnect my accounts. So that will be easier for you to, to get this idea uh, where I can connect. Perfect. So I can just click in connect. Ooh, I have another one. Yeah. Uh, this one. Disconnect, perfect. That was just because I, I already have the wallet stay, the address connected. So if I click in connect, you will see that the MetaMask come in here and then you can choose which account you want to connect to this DAP. So in this case, I'm just going to connect the account one, next, connect. And then you can see that the account that was connected, that was this one, the 179. And this is the 179, the account one. I'll account one here. Yeah, 179. Perfect. So that's how we can connect the wallet MetaMask to our app. So the second thing that I'm going to do is to initialize the contract. Initialize contract. To initialize the contract, we need to write the same things that we wrote before. 
So new web contract. We just need to pass the ABI, which I need to I'll just put it here really quick. Um, then let me go back to the ABI that we have from here. ABI and then the contract address that we already have here as well, because we are talking to this smart contract. Uh, okay, then we have this. And then let's see if this is initializing the contract properly. Contract. Let's just print that in the console. Let's see if we get any error. ABI is not defined. Yeah, is there any important part? Okay, let's see now. It's here as well. So we initialize the contract properly. Yeah, so this is looking great. We can see that the address of the contract is this one. So that's perfect. So that's how we can initialize the contract. Let me just open this. Yeah, so this is how we request the accounts to connect the accounts. And this is how we initialize the contract. Um, okay, perfect. So now to get the balance of the contract, I'm just going to use the same contract object here. First, I'm going to call the connect function. And then we can use contract.methods.getBalance, which is the function that we are calling .call. And then this will return the current balance. This current balance will be this. And then let's just show it in the console. Current balance. And then let's see what happens when we click here. Get balance. And then we have the balance here, which is five ether. So it's looking great. And then to withdraw, it will be the same. Um, or actually let's implement the donate function. That will be better, donate. So everyone can donate. And then to withdraw, you can withdraw like using the ether scan uh, methods or yeah, interacting directly with the contract. But we don't have time to put that function as well. Uh, but then to donate, what we need to do is same thing here. Let's call the connect first. Then what we need to do after that is to send a transaction by typing contract.methods. Um, donate, which is the function that we are calling dot send from accounts. Uh, yeah, accounts dot zero. Yeah, because this this is a this accounts is basically an array with the accounts that you connect. So we are sending a transaction from these accounts. And we need to specify the value here. So the value, let's say that it can be one way, just to make it easier. And then we can have const transaction receipt. Console don't log, transaction receive, transaction hash. Okay, so then let's try this donate function. Let's see if that works. Let's see if this works. When I click in donate, MetaMask pop up right now. So just confirm. Contract will have 5.000001 like ether. Let's see. Yeah. So as you can see now, we just send one way to this smart contract. Using the we could click here in get balance, we'll see that we have one way that we send here. Okay, perfect. So that's basically how we can create the DAP here with this. Every button is doing a, a different thing. Uh, if you want to make it a little bit better, what we can do is just to create um this user states. I'm not really into this. I don't remember how this works. Let me just check. Uh, const um Let's say balance, set balance, use state, yeah, zero, zero. So I'm just going to put kind of that in the front end and then the same with the uh, with the wallet, set wallet. Just for you to have like a more visual, um, um, more visual like interface instead of just using the console. So let's have this here and let's put 
wallet here, wallet. And then the same balance. So do you remember that this is the balance of the smart contract? And then we are going to set the balance when we call the get balance function. We are going to set balance using the current balance that we have here. And then when we connect the wallet, we are going to set wallet using these accounts zero. So now let's try this again. So if I clean connect, we are connecting to this wallet. And then if I clean get balance, oh, this, this must be a string. Yeah. So let's just put a string here. Uh, string. Yeah. And then let's see again. Connect, get balance. And then we have this five. Perfect. So I think this is kind of clear so far. Maybe we went a little bit quick. That you will be able to to check the recording and you can see the code as well. Uh, we also have the repository. Uh, we are going to share the repo so you will be able to see this as well. But this is basically how we can create the functions to interact with the different functions of the smart contract. How we can show the balance in the front end. Uh, how we can do how we press accounts, which is really important to initialize the contract to to interact with any smart contract. Uh, and yeah, and now what we are going to do is that the income will show you how we can deploy this into Flick. So with the link, you will be able to, to actually have this app working somewhere like online. So yeah, we'll just pass it into you, Yinka. And yeah, thank you so much guys for, for everything. If you need something, you can text me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Telegram, Santiago DevRel. And yeah, I will be really happy to help you. I will guide you through whatever that you need. So yeah, the floor is yours. Awesome, Yinka. great work. Santiago, that was um, an in-depth session. Thank you for going over how to build um, the Coffee Smart Contract and the front end as well. Um, just you know, real quick, if you could, can you push the front end you just built on GitHub and drop the link so I can clone that and we can have that as the one I'll make reference to while I prepare my slides and just like show it up. We have eight minutes, so I'm hoping I'm able to do this in eight minutes so we do not need to like set up another Zoom meeting um, but I'm sure I can do that in time. Yeah, that's true. Let me, if I can push it on time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. Oh, okay. Awesome. I'm going to share my screen um, and then, you know, introduce myself and let you know what I'm about in a second. Uh, okay. So let us do this. Okay. I just push it. Uh, just okay cool i think i need like permissions here here is the link yeah it's code africa dash life sweet all right yeah. sweet. i'm going to clone that um okay i need to okay i may have to I mean, need to reboot my Zoom, so I'll I'll be kicked out and joined back in real okay. quick because I I just enabled some permissions. 